Good morning, everybody out there in YouTube land. It's your buddy Chop It On coming at you with another episode of Chop Talk on Freebie Friday inside DFSArmy.com, the one stop shop for all things DFS. Um, we're opening up all of our premium content as we've done for the past month and a half or so. We're winding down the past couple of weeks of this promotion, so you need to get in and you need to take advantage of the special offers that we're promoting inside DFSArmy.com. Use coupon code CHOP, C H O P, in the comment section of this video and Come test drive the race car that has generated the buzz and multiple $10,000 winners this year in baseball. Um, I'm just going to tell you, these stats, the way we have these compiled, I'm going to walk you through our research station and show you kind of how to use this thing today. So as you guys start doing your research, you're going to start figuring out the power of this tool and how to go about doing it. Now, of course, if you come to the website and you go down MLB tab to starting lineups page, you can also watch this great tutorial if you have an extra hour or so of your time to really unlock everything this tool has to offer. That video might even be free. You might be able to check it out all the time. But for today, let's blow through and show you how we we've been digging through this section I, I mean I'll show you some of the pages we've got the results up here we've got a top 10 list if you're easy on if you like that BVP the trends tab is my favorite starting pitchers where I always uh, start we've got stacks we've got ballpark factors and then a link to our optimizer domination station which is still locked up for VIPs because that bad boy is an absolute beast that has a lot of resources tied up in it uh, starting at the starting pitching matchups where I usually go for the slate. And I'll show you a couple of things. You can look at all the different teams if you'd like, but you see all of their salaries, uh, FanDuel, DK, the team, the opponent, the handedness, and then you're going to see start times and whatever else. And you're going to start getting into some of these statistics, like you know the opponent versus the starter pitcher's hand, how these opponents hit right-handed or left-handed pitching, the opponent hitters and their K percentages versus handedness, swing and strikes, hard contact, those types of numbers are absolutely great. You can filter out things to bring only the cream to the top. I look to do the starting pitcher's K percentage, which is his strikeout percentage, and versus handedness of the opposing team, and that's where I get K score. So when I look at Noah Syndergaard, 21% and 28% is 49%, so a 490 K score is what Noah Syndergaard would have uh, to handedness to today's matchup based on the past year in the opponent's hitters and two years in his own pitching stats. That's why you're going to see little variances in these numbers. You look at his hard contact numbers and his swing and strike numbers. Who's got the real K stuff? Come down here to Domingo Germán, and you look at a 27.7 and a 21.2. You add that up. It's a 489. So right up there with Syndergaard as far as strikeout potential tonight and for a far lower price. Now, you can get into does he allow runs, you know, what's his hard contact against, things like that. You're going to determine that Syndergaard's the better pitcher, but maybe, just maybe, $7,000 is in your price point and 10000 is not. And maybe there's justification there along with some of the Vegas odds that would show you, you know, that, that – uh, Domingo Germán is not a terrible option by comparison. Now, you're not going to expect the 60 or 70 points you might get from a Syndergaard out of Germán, but you might get 35 or 40, 45, maybe 50 on a good night, and that's going to bring a better value multiplier, you know, 4x, 5x, 6x, than Syndergaard is going to get at, say, 50. So those are the things that you have to be weighing out in your mind. It's a sliding scale. All of these different price points are going to matter. And look, we're very heavily loaded tonight in the seven to $8,000 range. And so that's a lot of, in a lot of cases where the West is going to be won, if you will, when you're looking at these. So this is where we're going to really nitpick. And the cash gamer is probably going to go with Syndergaard. Um, there may be some mad bum. Carlos Martinez is still a fairly attractive price point. seems like his game logs have straightened out a little bit the past few starts. There's a whole bunch down in here, like I said, seven to 8K range. Uh, Keichel, maybe not. Godley, where was the one that I was talking about earlier today? Uh, Pena is not a bad option. Feels like, uh, where's Porcello? Where did Porcello go? Anyway, he felt a little overpriced at 9600 today, but he's not in a terrible spot himself. When I scroll over and open up a little bit more, you can see our DFS Army grades from a 98 all the way down to the bottom. These are the pitchers that I tend to attack, and I would do that by looking over here at the opponents. These are the teams I'm looking to stack. You will notice that in Chin Music, those are the teams that you usually see. This is where I'm getting this information from, is from our research station tool. Uh, pitcher stats versus lefties versus righties, if you want to take a look into a little bit deeper dives, always, always a good idea if you have the time to do it. Vegas lines, I look for big money favorites. Porcello's got the minus 210. Um, you know, you go back up here to Syndergaard, minus 130. You know, so 
maybe that factors in. I know that for me, I'm looking for guys that typically check mark a bunch of the boxes. I'm looking for low implied totals, pitcher parks, big Vegas favorites, uh, high strikeout totals, low you know whips and things like that. Lots of innings pitched. When I really want to dig into the numbers, I'm going to go looking at all of those numbers and start checking boxes. And this guy has four boxes checked. This guy's six boxes checked. So the six box box checker is probably the guy that I'm going to go with. Price is another one, of course. A $7,000 pitcher that checks five boxes is better than a $10,000 pitcher that checks five boxes because they've got an equally strong matchup in most cases, and I'm going to opt for price to be my tiebreaker in that case. So there's a lot of tools in these pages that you can sift through. Now, when I'm looking for bats, well, let's do this, actually. If I wanted to cut down to just the 8 o'clock starts tonight, I can hold the control button down, and I can start clicking off these other seven o'clock starts and the later starts I don't know if the 840 game is going to be on there probably not but when this adjusts it'll show me which teams are on there one two three four game slates at least and now we've got a different mix of the pitchers because a lot of those guys fell off of the main slate now we're left with Keiko, Odorizzi, these are the high, Carlos Martinez, Evaldi. these are the highest rated pitchers on the slate and we can still go off the DFSA grade and take a look at what these lower pitchers are doing. You know, they're down here in the 40s, 50s. 50 is not necessarily a bad pitcher in DFSA rating. I usually try to stick with under 40, so these bottom two would probably be the pitchers that I'm picking on. So I'd be looking heavily at Houston and St. Louis and hoping those offenses are also hot, because if they're hitting soft pitching and they're also hot, then there's a very, very good sign they're going to have a good night, and that's where I would start looking for bats. Kansas City, maybe not. Uh, not a powerful enough offense for me to really focus on all that often. Uh, Minnesota's been hot lately. Might look at them and be a little bit more of a contrarian stack against Ivaldi, who should be fairly popular tonight. Uh, St. Louis is going to be very chalky tonight. Uh, it doesn't mean that Martinez is the best pitcher on the slate. It just means that Cincinnati bats are going to be very, very low owned. If you think that Martinez is prone to blowing up, that's another contrarian stack that you could run out tonight that would really ga gather some low ownership. I think that, again, this is mostly where you're going to find your bats, maybe a little bit of Tampa, although Odorizzi is going to be somewhat popular in GPP. So, again, you might get a little bit of leverage stacking there. Combining Odorizzi with, you know, say, obviously Kansas City is going to be low on, but Odorizzi with Minnesota or something might and just kind of stack that game up. Might be really interesting if you think that game could blow up in the other way. But, again, this we're getting a little bit off topic. What we do is we run into the trends tool. I mean, and this is just, again, for these main slate or these smaller slates. The main slate is going to have Cindergard and whatnot on it. I uncheck them all, and I come right back to the main page. When I go to the Trends tab, I'm looking for the bats now. I can filter things out. If I want to find you know, the hottest bats, I can look at these. The trends are going to show me the last seven days, last 14 days, and then there are a couple of seasons worth of numbers. And it shows it to me in WOBA, which is a great number, ISO, which is your power number, hard contact, which also tells you maybe who's coming around. You see a guy down here, 39%, uh, 52%, 56% tells me that Arenado's hitting the ball really, 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 really hard. When I look at his WOBA down to the 375, it's telling me he's not maybe getting the results he deserves for hitting the ball as hard as he's hitting it. And that tells me that maybe he's due to swing back around and come back up towards where his normal standard range is. When that happens, you're set in, up in a really, really good way. His BABIP is even a little bit low. I mean, Eric Thames' BABIP is really, really high. Scroll over here a little bit more. One thing that we do use sometimes is this hard BABIP number. This is kind of a fun one. It combines hard contact with BABIP, and it takes the differential. If you've got a guy who has a high hard, hard contact number and a low BABIP number, then you're going to find a guy high on this chart here. And so guys like Chris Bryant might be due for a big night at this 33%. Coming down here a little bit more is another 33% in uh, Sin Chu Chu in Texas. And looking down here, it's a 35 at Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham's been hitting the ball hard, not getting any results whatsoever from it. So perhaps he's due to have some balls fall in and help him out. Hit streaks I haven't paid a lot of attention to in study, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, how many hit streaks are these guys piled together? How consistent might they be? These are just all things, again, you can check. What I tend to focus on myself is this Woba tab. I can come down here, filter out greater than, say, 400, and find the truly hot guys. I only want to deal with them. And I can start building cash lineups and tournament lineups off this page. If I really wanted to scroll over here, 
you know, who's also hitting the ball hard? Let's say over the last seven days, we want somebody hitting it greater than 45%. Of course, that just took them all the way. Maybe it needs to be a 0.45. Now we've cut them down a little bit. So now I've got guys that are hitting the ball hard over the last seven days and guys that are hitting for high wobas over the last seven days. Generally speaking, those are going to be hot bats. If I want to get rid of these guys with no plate appearances, I can filter this one out. I can go to greater than say, you know, 35 at-bats in the last 14 days and get guys that are most likely starting. What I'm doing is I'm cutting down my player pool with numbers. I'm unleashing this beast of a tool. If I play on DraftKings and I want value bats, I might come all the way down here to less than, say, 4200 bucks. And there's my value list right there. So now I can run Noah Syndergaard on the main slate. And by running Noah Syndergaard on the same slate, I'm going to have some Dozier, some Chris Davis, Wilson Ramos, Jason Kipnis, Pablo Sandoval, Whit Merrifield, whatever. It's going to be more of a cash lineup. It's not very well stacked. But I'm going to have all guys that are hitting 400 or better on their Wobas and are hitting the ball hard 45% of the time or better over the last week. And I'm telling you, that's this is a very, very strong list. If I wanted to clear this one, and then just run... On draft on FanDuel, you know, under say 3,500. There's my list. There's my value list. And if I wanted to cut it down even further under 3,000, I could do that. But what I'm showing you is again how to cut down to very very hot bats, and you know, guys that are hitting the ball really really hard. If I want to open my list up a little bit, it's very easy just to clear off some of these lists. It's also very easy to lighten the load on this just a little bit. Let's say instead of 400, I wanted to go to say, you know, 360. And see if we don't have some guys that could probably we'll keep the plate appearances the same. We'll keep the we'll keep the salaries the same and look at how this list just grew. Just that 360 to 400 really cuts your list down. But now what I can do, I can go through the offenses that I wanted to target today, like Seattle and Colorado. If I want to just look at Seattle and Colorado, I, well, I guess they don't have anybody on their list that's under that price point. How interesting is that? Mitch Hanager is the only one on that team. Watch this. If I clear this trending, trending Wobo list out, there they all are. Low, low, low numbers. Seattle is not in the greatest position tonight. That's what that's telling me. Now, they are in Coors, and they're facing a softer pitcher in Sensatella, so they might actually do, you know, wind up okay. But as of this particular uh, rendition of what we're doing, it's not telling us much. Uh, when I look at Colorado here, I see very expensive bats. I'm not going to find anyone under 3500 But if I wanted to look at, say, Colorado and Texas tonight, St. Louis, Atlanta and Tampa Bay. St. Louis, Atlanta, Tampa Bay. There's five offenses that I could stack that are in good positions tonight. And now if I wanted to find you know, some players to stack inside here, I could very easily do this. I've got Colorado rated very, very high on the list, running fairly hot. So I might start my lineup with our Arenado, Blackman, and Story. I'd have to probably come down in pitching and not take Syndergaard, but I've got a bunch of $7,000 pitchers that I could use tonight. Might throw some Chu in there. Might throw some Wong in there for value. Looks like a St. Louis stack would be in order uh, with Jerko, Jose Martinez, and Colton Wong. So if I build that list right there around $7,000 pitcher, I might get up to these $4,000 bats and have a St. Louis slash Colorado stack. That's not going to be an unpopular stack tonight, just so you know. When I look down here at Atlanta, I've got 460 and 430 for Woba and Albies and Marquecas. So might be able to fit some of those in with a little bit of Wendell in Tampa Bay. Wendell, Bowers if he starts. Uh, Kron has some powers, hitting a 559 Woba over the last seven days. This is how you narrow these lists down, and this is how you get a player pool. If you want a little bigger player pool, widen it out a little bit include another team. Let's say you like Baltimore tonight. Throw them in there and grow that list just a little bit. But you've got to keep some kind of tighter parameters on this stuff over here or you're going to start taking guys that you don't really want in your life. If I want to cut it down to 380 and cut this list down just a little bit more, 
now I've got Baltimore in there, but I've got some of these. If I, if I wanted to use basically all of the teams, I just click on one of them, then hit the control button, click it back off, all the teams will come back. My filters will remain. If I want, I can, I can sort by uh, descending order. I can sort by descending order, and I can pull all of the hottest Wobas right up to the top. And then I can maybe be focused on these guys. If I want to look at that. And if I wanted to go value bats again, I can come down to less than, say, 3,000. And from there, I'm going to have the hottest guys at the top. And these are all guys that are getting at bats and are under $3,000. This is league wide. So if you wanted to run a Syndergaard, this might be in a, a game plan or an attack plan for you. This is just how you use this tool. This thing is very, very powerful. It sorts all of the stats for you. It sorts out everything from top to bottom. And you can really cruise through, get some ideas on a slate of what you'd like to do, maybe who you'd like to attack against. Maybe click on just one offense and take a look at who you're going to want to take uh, you know, shots at. Maybe you don't even want to use any of the filters, and you just want to go through it kind of yourself and take a peek that way. That's fine. Maybe you play smaller slates. You know, you're going to play the late slate tonight. So somewhere in here, I've still got filters. I've got filters on the plate appearances. I cleared that one off, and I cleared that one off. Not exactly sure where I get stuck, but when you get stuck, the easiest thing to do is just refresh the page. When I come back and refresh the page, hopefully my my filters go away, whatever I've jacked around with goes away, and I've got all my bats back. If I come back to the trends page, there's my names again. So when I refresh the page, it resets everything, and now I can start playing all over again. What you're going to do is you're then, if you're a VIP, you're going to take that into our domination station and start building some lineups. Now that you've got your player pool identified, you're going to start maybe adjusting some of those projections with the smiley faces, the like, the love, the adore, or you go in manually and adjust the points yourself. You see a guy at 9 points and you put him up to 11 points, the optimizer is going to like him more than it normally does and it's going to pull him into more of your lineups. You can control the stacking. You can control all of these things. You use these tools in conjunction with themselves. And when you do that, you've got all of our content unlocked. You've got all of our tools from the research station to the lineups page to the domination station optimizer all unlocked for you. And this is great practice for figuring out how you're going to attack the NFL season, which is coming up, which is what leads me to telling you our prices are going up. You need to get in here and become a VIP soon. We're showing you our tools for the MLB season so that you understand what you're getting. You get all of this for basically 40 bucks a month right now. You get all of the coaching, all of the tools, all of the statistics, everything that you could possibly, that is dirt cheap compared around the industry. So why not invest in yourself? Why not learn these tools? Make yourself a better player. Make yourself a better, um, you know, more of a shark, I guess you would say, inside the industry, and then go actually make some money. It's not that hard if you wager, you know, 20, 40, 50 bucks a night or something, or a couple hundred bucks a week in the NFL. It's not that hard to justify the membership price or the subscription. Yeah, there's a lot of free content out there, but really and truly, most of everybody is going towards premium content, and you're going to start getting locked out. So you might as well get in here and get locked in before prices go up, because once you join, you're grandfathered in for the remainder of your subscription or your membership. Your price won't ever go up again as long as you keep your membership. If you leave and come back, I can't help you. I've got a lot of guys that left at 20 bucks and they came back and it's now 40 and they're pissed. And I, I feel for you, but we've told you the whole time, don't ever leave because if you leave and the prices go up, I can't help you. So all I'm trying to do is pass along what I believe is the best industry news, content, tools, everything wrapped in the best value inside the industry with the best advice and the best coaching to basically interact with people that have done this before and become better and better and better players and start turning yourself into a pro. So bottom line is what I want you guys to do is click the link in the description, become a member today and unlock all of this stuff for you. Test drive the machine and become a VIP. Take care, guys. I'll talk to you another day.